Right guys, welcome back to another past paper walkthrough series of videos. This is 2024 paper one. That is last year's paper one. My year 13s have just done this paper of their mock. So firstly, well done to them for getting through that. And obviously well done to anyone else who has successfully navigated their mocks ahead of the summer exams. For anyone who did this paper, hopefully these videos will shed some light on where you went wrong or what you could potentially have done differently. Obviously, if you haven't done your mocks yet and you think you may be doing this paper, I would recommend completing the mocks first before looking at the answers. As always, we are going to do a question per video and we are going to jump straight in with question number one, which you can see on your screen now. Now, there are two main elements to this question. OK, so you have outline one ethical issue and then you have to refer to a social influence study in your answer or refer to one or more social influence studies in your answer. Okay, you have four marks of AO1, that's four marks of outline, and you effectively get two marks for outlining the ethical issue and you get another two marks for reference to a study and you know explaining how that eth ethical issue came up in that study. Note that it says outline one ethical issue but you can then also talk about one or more studies. Okay, for two marks, I would suggest one study should be plenty if you pick the right ethical issue and obviously the right study to go with it. Okay, note as well on this one that in the examiner's report, the thing that dragged people down a little bit in this question was not being able to outline the ethical issue in enough detail. Okay, so it's not just identify the ethical issue, it's actually outline or describe what that ethical issue means. Okay, so let's jump over and let's have a look at the model answer. So I have gone for protection from harm. Okay, so that first paragraph is all about what protection from harm actually is. Okay, so the guideline states that participants should not be exposed to more physical or psychological harm than they would have experienced in everyday life. Okay, and then on top of that, research must ensure that participants leave the, the experiment in the same state as they entered. Okay, so that is effectively what protection from harm actually means. Okay, um, and that's the level of detail that I would expect my students to write into this answer okay and then if we're going to apply it to a piece of research um, we can use milgram because that's always a nice nice one to talk about for any ethical issue really um, so the guideline was breached in milgram's research okay and then why well because participants displayed visible signs of psychological distress such as sweating trembling and even seizures as a result of believing that they were administering lethal electric shocks. Okay, if you have any other evidence or advice as to why they uh, weren't protected from harm, then obviously you can write that in. But I would advise against writing something like participants believed they had killed somebody and that can harm them psychologically that's not enough detail to get all of the marks okay so make sure you are telling me how we know that they are suffering from psychological damage rather than just allowing the examiner to infer some kind of meaning from what you've written okay so there are my four marks for this answer okay i hope that all makes sense uh, thank you very much for watching